Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content. Today we take a look at one of the most infamous UK criminals to ever exist in the UK criminal underworld. From his early years as a gangster in London, to his later career in writing, charity work and acting, along with all the controversies. Mr. David John Courtney was born on the 17th of February 1959 in Bermondsey, London. Born to a normal family with a younger brother, his family nor upbringing had anything to do with a turn to crime, according to Mr. Courtney. In interviews, he has described himself as a born leader and someone who was destined for crime at an early age. He was a funny guy in high school and got along with most people around him, but wasn't afraid to employ violence when he needed to assert dominance or someone was trying to mess with him. Mr. Courtney had been involved in debt collecting and bodyguard work, even minding clubs. In his time as an active criminal, Mr. Courtney has also been shot, stabbed, and has his nose bitten off and sewn back on, and also explained at times that he had to kill to stay alive. However, he was mostly known for the intense web of connections that he had ready to help him with any task, earning him the nickname of the Yellow Pages of the Underworld. He was propelled into the public eye and stardom when he organized security at Ronnie Cray's funeral, Arranging the funeral as well as he did made him the enemy of the police and painted a target on his back. A man who was able to organise the most serious organised criminals up and down the UK wasn't something the police were just going to bat an eye at. Newspapers painted him as the heir to the throne and used him as a visual for the face of organised crime in the UK. Overwhelmed, Mr Courtney attempted to back off and stop the titles from being thrown at him, which is when he wrote his first book. Stop the ride, I want to get off. And without meaning for the situation, he did begin to become more organised in his methods. Instead of bursting into people's apartments to demand money, he had to be quieter and sneakier about it. The police had painted a target on his back and warned anyone that worked with Mr Courtney that they needed to watch out. Soon after, he was the star of a three-part observational documentary called Dave Courtney's Underworld, which followed him during a police corruption case. He was eventually found not guilty of the crime, and the documentary shows him celebrating with his friends and family. Mr. Courtney has had an illustrious career outside of crime. With his acting to writing, his acting career consists mostly of television documentaries and his appearances as himself, and he has directed a movie called Hell to Pay, which he also starred in. He had a role in the 1990 movie The Craze. It has also been claimed that Mr. Courtney may have been the inspiration of Vinnie Jones' character in Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Mr. Courtney is the author of six books, all of them very interesting and entertaining to read, with four of them reaching number one bestsellers. Stop the Ride I Wanna Get Off in 1999, Raving Lunacy in 2000, Dodgy Dave's Little Black Book in 2001, The Ride's Back On in 2003, and Fuck the Ride 2005, and Heroes and Villains in 2006. Interestingly enough, the books amassed major success with little to no marketing on the parts of the publishers. Due to certain laws, it could be constructed as glamorising crime to splay posters everywhere of the book, which is prohibited. The cover depicts him smoking a cigar, which is also limited in its advertising in the States. In 2002, while he was driving, Mr. Courtney was forced off the road in a suspected gang hit. His car was forced off the road by another vehicle and went somersaulting over the highway at 70 miles an hour. He was left for dead with a broken pelvis, a punctured lung, four broken ribs and a broken foot with bruised kidneys. Mr. Courtney was pulled over by police on October 29th, 2007. Because the red BMW that he was in had the illegal vanity license plate reading Bad Boy 1. Officers searched his car and found a singular live bullet in his pocket along with a number of other prop weapons. He claimed it was all for one of his shows to at-risk youth, but he was still taken into custody. He claimed it was blank ammunition, and he was extremely surprised to learn that in fact it was real. However, he was able to talk himself out of a jail sentence by showing the judge how he had reformed as a criminal, and now worked on convincing young men who are on dangerous paths that the crime doesn't pay, and had a slew of charities writing in as character witnesses. The judge presiding over the case 
Judge Ticehurst, ended the sentencing by saying, it perhaps undermines your street credibility and your stage performance that you cannot distinguish between a real round and a fake round, but perhaps that's not for me to say. It was given an 18 month sentence and a conditional discharge. Later in 2009, in May, Mr. Courtney reportedly owed £400,000 to creditors, including £250,000 in taxes. After filing for bankruptcy, auditors started searching Mr. Courtney's home, Camelot Castle, for assets, and discovered three illegal guns. He claimed they were simply used as props for his charity shows and belonged to his wife, who owned a company called Proper Job. However, this didn't change the fact that some of his weapons were prohibited and he was still on conditional discharge for the possession of a bullet. He spent time on remand in prison, but was eventually cleared of the charges by a jury. The gun that had been prohibited, a Brocock air cartridge pistol, had been legal just a few years earlier when Mr. Courtney claimed to have come into possession of it, but was banned due to the ease in which it could be modified into a cartridge firing weapon. On October the 30th, 2011, Dave Courtney pled guilty to attacking his wife, Jenny, in their home. He served his sentence for his attack in Belmarsh Prison. In 2013, tragedy struck Dave Courtney and his wife, Jenny Courtney. Mr. Courtney's stepson, Jensen Pinto, 23, was shot at point blank range whilst he had been talking on the phone outside of his girlfriend's house. It was a suspected revenge hit over a drug feud that had left the whole family grieving, including his two younger sisters. Things hadn't been smooth for the Pinto Courtney family in the upcoming months to Jensen's murder, which led to Dave Courtney being a suspect in the murder. Mr. Jensen was a drug dealer and had started lashing out repeatedly and flying into rages after taking steroids. Mr. Jensen and Mr. Courtney had even gotten into fistfights, but had eventually resolved their issues with one another. In a show of restraint, Mr. Courtney publicly begged anyone seeking vigilante justice to let police find out who did it. Dozens of gangsters from Sheffield, Cardiff and Liverpool offered to help him find who did it, but he graciously turned them down saying, I don't want to carry on the cycle of violence. He recognised that the situation at hand could lead to a full on gang war in the area, which the police were readying for with bated breath. Two men were eventually convicted of the murder of Jensen Courtney. One was Robert Bleach, who had been the getaway driver, and the second was David Pinto, Jensen Courtney's uncle. They were given lifelong sentences and told to serve them with a minimum term of 31 years before being considered eligible for parole. There are some inconsistencies. Numerous questions and concerns have been raised over the years with regard to the authenticity of Mr. Courtney's life story. One of the largest inconsistencies lied with the relationship with the Krays. Courtney claimed to have worked with them in their heyday, but if that were true, he would have been working with them as a nine-year-old or younger. Frankie Fraser, a former member of the Richardson gang, had also accused Courtney of embellishing and fabricating his illustrious criminal career and position in the underworld. But Mr. Courtney is resoundingly denied overstating his past and Mr. Courtney explains that what really happened was that Frankie Fraser had held a huge grudge over his wife running off with one of Mr. Courtney's employees, which is what their disagreement had actually stemmed from. Mr. Courtney turned the tables in an interview and claimed that it was Mr. Fraser who in fact was lying about his career and the 40 or more hits that he claims to have carried out. He also argues that he shouldn't have had to look up to Mr. Fraser for spending 47 years in prison because it means he was clumsy. You only have to read one of Mr. Courtney's books or watch his films or interviews to understand that Mr. Courtney is a man with extremely valuable knowledge and given the right platform could change the life of many of the troubled youth who might be heading down the wrong path and give them a push in life in the right direction in the UK today. Regardless of personal opinions on Mr. Courtney and his stories from the past, it doesn't change the fact that he's built a successful career and helped change lives. He now works with various charities, promoting staying on the right side of the law and using the catchphrase, crime doesn't pay. He claims that by sharing his stories, he's not attempting to make the world of crime sound appealing. He says, I'm not trying to glamorize crime, I'm trying to glamorize Dave. Truly, this man is deserving of the OBEs he's given himself, which stands for one big ego. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and a share and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content, then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.